For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father and the holy angels. Now the Bible teaches that you have a body, but living down inside of your body is your soul or your spirit. I'm not going to try to distinguish tonight because that's a technical theological discussion between soul and spirit. I'm going to use them interchangeably. Your soul is that part of you made in the image of God that lives inside of you and that's the eternal part of you. That's the important part of you. That's the real you. That's the part of you that will be living a thousand years from now, either in heaven or hell. The real you, your body will be in the grave until the resurrection. Hey, what is you addicted to? What type of sin are you committed to? What is it, man, that's been drifting you? I'm on my knees, all my problems, what I give to you. You will empower and enable me. I know my righteous God will favor me. He sent his spirit just to help me. I love you, Jesus, cause your love will never fail me. Now, I said a city full of tattered tales, full of spirits, full of Jezebels. The way they quit to cast a magic spell. In Jesus' name, though, we send the demons back to hell. They wear you back and sex you have to sell. And you get caught, now you shackle trap back in a cell. Hey, because you traveled down that rabbit trail. You feel forgotten, now you asking if you have some mail. You tell them push ups to spread life. Cause you ain't listen when life was giving you red lights. And most your homies is dead, right? Now why you flexing for the block like it's your bread, right? Hey, I tell them what about your soul, though? If you would die today, do you know where you go, though? Listen, right, I'm not you say, what about your soul, no though? I promise, no, you if you was to die today, you know where you go, though? <laughs> Amen. That's the question, though. If you was to die today, we learn that our soul is the real us. We learn that that soul is not going to stay with the body. It's going to leave the body. Right? That's what we're talking about. Anyway, this is uh, part two. Um, this is going to be the second half of that first video. I showed you I had to chop it in half because um, it was too long. I don't want to put videos on there and it's too long and you guys see the thumbnail and say, oh man, that's 50 minutes, I ain't gonna watch that, that's too long. So I try to put it like 30 minutes or 40 minutes or 25 minutes, stuff like that. But anyway, <clears throat> um, the main thing I wanted to say, I just wanted to let y'all, let y'all know, man, I really appreciate y'all stopping by to listen to the video. You know, we are all here on this channel to learn the things about God. Um... We see that in the, in the last video, the one right before this, um, we was talking about how the soul does leave the body because, you know, there's there's some teaching out there telling people that, you know, there's some preachers out there, sad to say it. That's why Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. When he said no man, he means no man, no matter who they is, preacher, teacher, evangelist, it doesn't matter. Don't let nobody deceive you by standing in line with the word of God. You got some preachers out there teaching you that when you die, you just rested in the ground until judgment day. Nobody's in hell right now. Nobody's in heaven right now. I guarantee you, stay with this lesson. You're gonna find out through scripture, not by my word of mouth, but through scripture that all that is false. All that is not true. Amen. Um, one part comes and they build a whole doctrine off of it of uh, two misinterpreted scripture. We're gonna get into that further down the road. Right now, I just want you to see, we already saw through scripture that the soul do not stay with the body. That little boy soul in, in, in first uh, Kings chapter 17, when he died, the Bible says that his soul after the man of God, after the prophet prayed, said that his soul came back again. That means that his soul left, you know, so the soul don't stay with the body. Uh, we see also the spirit don't say, stay with the body. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse seven, that even the spirit leaves the body and go back to where to go back to God who gave it 
The, the spirit is the current air. That automatically goes back to God. That automatically go to heaven. Ain't no if, and, and about about that spirit. But your soul also leaves the body. We learned that. We also learned in the last video, what is the soul? And we learned that we are the soul. You heard that preacher in the beginning when he told you that that's the real us. I I'm going to tell y'all something, man. God is so good. Right, that is the first time I ever seen his message. I just saw that message yesterday, and I thought it, I thought to put it in this clip. The the reason why it, it it fascinated me so much is because I've never seen that video, but these are the things that God has revealed to me. That's why it's good to spend time with the Lord. And the same thing that the Lord would teach you, He would teach somebody else too. And I noticed that that preacher, that's Billy Graham. That's back probably in the seventies, maybe even the eighties, right? That's back then, and and that's how preachers used to preach back then. They used to preach with 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 boldness and tell you the deep things of God. But today, they don't do that. And you know what? That that video let me know that as I've been spending time with God, God is teaching me the right way, just like the preachers was back then. Because the preachers today will be telling you, not the street preachers. They they're pretty good with telling you to repent, turn from your sins. But the preachers today, the preachers today want to preach to you that prosperity gospel. Tell you that if you give them all your money, that God going to make you rich. You know, that prosperity gospel. I don't want to hear nothing about prosperity gospel. I know that if I live right, God is going to bless me. And that's all we need to know. Just live right and learn how to live right. Amen. But anyway, you know, I, so I put that in there because I wanted to show you all that, you know, that, that fascinated me to see it, man. It's like everything he was saying, majority of the stuff he was saying, it's the stuff that God had revealed to me a long time ago. You know, so that just let, let me know, man, that I'm on the right track. So, you know, like like he said, you know, the, the soul is the real you. And that's that's what I said in the last video. And I just seen his video yesterday after I posted the other video a couple of days ago. But like he said, that soul is the real you. And that's what God revealed to me because scripture revealed that to us. Right. Scripture showed us. It says that Adam, after God breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, it said that Adam became a living soul. It tells us it tells us in first Corinthians what was it, chapter 15, verse 45? If I'm not mistaken, it says that Adam, the first man, became a living soul. You know, so so we are a living soul. We human beings are a living soul. That soul is a spiritual being that was created by God. And we are triune and we are consist of the spirit, the soul and the body. If this is your first time watching this, back up and watch a few more videos so you can catch up and learn the things about the spirit. And now we're into the soul. But anyway, so the soul is the real us. And we're going to get into not this video, but the next video after that, we're going to show that that's in that soul. We have all five of our senses. You know, we can see, we can hear, we can smell, we can taste, we can touch. And we even have an imagination. That soul is eternal. It would never die never die that's why it's important on where you go after you leave because you either like the preacher said you either gonna go to heaven or you're gonna go to hell there is no you just die and you just cease to exist that's another false teaching out there that don't come from the church but that come from a lot of false religion that if you die you just cease to exist so if that's the case i could just act a fool my whole life right and if i die oh well i don't i don't receive no punishment for how wicked i live my whole life no and it, it ain't like that. When you die, when you leave, when your soul depart this body, it's either the angels of God that's going to come get you and escort you to heaven or them demons are going to come get you and take you down there to hell and torment you in that flame. We're going to talk about that. Um, not in this video, but another video. Amen. So these things are going to get deeper. And this, these things, this lesson is not to make you scared, not to make you afraid, but it's to get you closer to God and to realize you know that this walk this journey is serious the bible says appointed for every man to die once and after this is judgment amen <laughs> this is serious ladies and gentlemen anyway so this is part two watch this video take heed to the things that's being said in this video y'all seen that video right before this of the song that's brian trago i just want to share with y'all man my wife had got us some tickets to go see him he's coming to california my wife got us some tickets to go see him so we're going to go see him i think it's in another month or so but uh i'm excited about that man because i mean i'm telling you man majority of my playlists 
is him and a whole bunch of other people too, but he's on the majority of my playlist list, man. I love listening to, to his songs, man. His songs are so, so, so very encouraging. He has a deep testimony, a powerful testimony because he had a twin and his twin was murdered and that's what caused him to get closer to the Lord. Amen. So anyway, this is part two. Watch part two and I will see you on the next video. God bless you guys. He says, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, if our earthly house was to, was to die, was to pass away because the spirit and the soul left, he said we have a building of God. He's reassuring us. He's, he's letting us know that just because you leave that building, guess what? You got another building, a, and it's a building of God. He said a house not made with hands, and he says eternal in the heavens. You know what the eternal mean? It won't never die. It won't never get old. It won't never have suffer pain anymore, be stressful anymore. None of that. No, no pain, no, no headache, no, no, no uh, backache, no lower backache, no chest pain, no knee pain, no ankle pain, none of that. And you're never going to die again. You're never going to get old anymore. And this gives us a hope of something to look forward to. I'm telling you, man, being a Christian and knowing this word, I don't mind dying. Now, I ain't going to kill myself, but I don't mind dying. Why? Because I know if I die, I know where I'm going, and I know what's waiting on me, and I know where it's waiting on me at. <laughs> Amen? So we read that again. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a, don't, in other words, don't, don't, don't worry. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal. It's eternal, and it's in the heavens where God is at. Verse 2, he says, for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven and look what he's saying here he said because of this knowledge because of this what we know he said we grown and he ain't talking really about young folks right because young folks they, they don't go through pain they don't go through suffering they ain't got to deal with bills they got they, they stress free when they real young and they stay at home with their mama and they still in school only thing they worried about is passing their test outside of that they don't have real worries right now most of them don't. But he said, for in this we groan. In other words, having this knowledge, we groan. Why? Earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house. We, we want to be clothed. Okay, yeah, we're clothed right now. Our, our soul, the real us, is clothed with this house, this earthly house. But our desire, good God Almighty, our desire is to be clothed upon with our house. From heaven. See, young folks don't really have to think about this, but for us folks that's a little older, as time get, as time go on, you start developing body aches. You know, you start getting ankle aches and lower back aches and knee aches, and you, you sh sometimes this world brings forth a lot of stress. You know, uh, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you got bills and it seems like after you done took your check, you done paid all the bills and you think you fine, it seems like before you turn around, those same bill collectors is right there to say, okay, now you gotta give me this, you gotta give me that. And you know, and sometimes that could be real stressful. Going through that, just the, the, the things of life, you preaching to people and trying to get them right for God and people is like, man, I don't wanna hear that, I don't believe in that. Man, don't talk to me about that, man. If there's a God, let him judge me. Let him, let him, let me and him worry about that on judgment day. And that, that kind of stresses you out because you want to see these people get saved so it's just like it's a world of problems that you gotta it, it's a burden that you gotta carry as you go through this world and it comes a time in your life when you actually just say man you know what man i'm so tired of this world i'm tired of looking on the news and just seeing people getting killed and murdered gunned down ran down and beaten and slaughtered by their own people and then they have the nerve with a police officer uh, uh, get into an entanglement with one of them and, and shoot them. Now everybody in the hood want to hold signs up saying, "Ah, oh, they racist, but we killing our own. I'm talking about my people, my black people. We killing our own in the neighborhood. And I get tired of seeing that on the news. Every time you turn around, we just gunning each other down. Lives are just coming short so often in the neighborhood. And you're hearing on the news about how women are getting raped, women are getting beaten, children are getting uh, molested. Man, this 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 world, it comes to a point where you just get so fed up where you say, you know what, man, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to leave this earthly body <laughs> and go take on my heavenly body, which is eternal in heaven.
I ain't got to, once I get that body, I ain't got to worry about getting sick no more. I ain't got to worry about no pain and aches. I ain't got to worry about stressing. I ain't worried about getting older. And I ain't never got to worry about dying. I will live like God forever and ever and ever. And that I is not just I, it's also you. It's us. If we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and keep, keep walking with God, God has promised us to take us out of this body and give us a new body in heaven. And there we'll be there forever for eternal. He says in verse 3, if so be that being clothed, we should not be found naked. In other words, when we leave, when we come out of this body, we're actually naked. When we when, when our soul leaves that body, the day that the Lord calls us out of this body, when our time is up and when we're called out of this body, our soul now is not in a body anymore. It's not clothed with the body anymore. Now the soul is naked. But once we reach heaven, it won't be naked anymore because he has another body for us. Amen. He said, verse 4. For we that are in this in this tabernacle, notice how he said we that are in this tabernacle, we that are in this body. So we are different than the body. The body is not us. That's not the real us. The spirit, the current air, that's not the real us. The soul is the real us. Amen. He said, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan. Yes, we do. Being burdened. Yes, we have burdens. Not for that we would be unclothed. Amen. But clothe upon that mortality. That word mortality means liable to die. This body is liable to die. This body is going to die one day. Why? Because God said it is appointed. Hebrews 9, 27. It is appointed for every man to die once. That's a, that, every man has an appointment. Every human being has an appointment with death. He says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. He says... To everything, there's a season and a time and a purpose. There's a time to be born and then there's a time to die. So we all going to die. Our bodies is mortal. Yeah, we're mortal. Our bodies are subject to die. But the soul lives on. We're going to get to that in a little bit. Uh, he says, for, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened, not for, for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality that this this body that dies might be swallowed up of life because eternal life is just going to swallow that up where we're no longer going to die anymore amen now let's look let's look at six seven and eight look what he says here he says therefore we are always confident knowing that while look at this now while we our souls are at home in the body right now this is where our home is at because this is where we live at we the real the real us the souls are living inside of this body this triune body right he says therefore we are also we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body while we in at home in the body we are absent from the lord that's true because you can't be in two places at one time right so if we are at home in the body we are actually absent from the Lord. Now, people may say, well, you know, the Bible said when two or three agree and touch anything on earth, there he is in the midst. That's true. He is in the midst. He is in our presence. But this particular presence is a real presence. So, yeah, he, he's talking about a real presence. It's like, it's like, it's like being at home with your children. You see them face to face every day. You're there with them, right? You see your daughter, you see your son, you see your husband, you see your wife. You're there. You can see them face to face. You can talk to them face to face. But when you leave the house, your physical presence is not there anymore. As long as we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord because we are not in his presence. See, there's going to come a time when we leave this body, we are going to be in the presence of God. We don't have to try to figure out what he looked like anymore. We'll be looking right at him. We'll be able to see him walk. We'll be able to see him talk. We'll be able to hear his, 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 his words. We'll be able to see him from head to toe, right? Because we'll literally be there in his presence. That's where I want to be. I want. I love being in his presence right now by worshiping him and, and following his word. But ain't nothing. If I wanted, you cannot compare that with actually being there in his presence. Actually seeing heaven with your own two eyes. Actually seeing and embracing your, your new body. And seeing how different and how younger you look when you get there. Hey Amen. Boy, God is good, man. He said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. People might say, well, Joy, 
I can't see that. I can't see it being no heaven. I can't see that there's a God. I never saw God before. None of us never saw God before. But that's why he tell you that we walk by faith and not by sight. This relationship with the Lord requires faith. I ain't never seen God with my own two eyes. But guess what? By faith, I believe he exists. Verse 8. He says, we are confident, I say, and willing rather. That's true. To be absent from the body That's why I'm more willing to be absent from the body And to be present with the Lord That's what I was just telling you a little while ago But this is what I'm trying to show you I'm showing you that there's a difference between the soul Which is the real us and the body And the spirit He said we, verse 8 We are confident We are confident I say And willing rather to be absent from the body And to be present with the Lord We prefer to be absent from the body Because we're in the body right now, now, but the real us wants to come out of this body, even though we don't have control to just step out of this body. We got to wait till that day come when God call us out of this body. But when God call us out of this body, we'll be absent from the body and immediately we will be in heaven in the presence of God. Amen. We, ladies and gentlemen, we are spiritual beings that was created by God and he put us in a house. A earthly house to temporarily live in which is our bodies that God formed from the dust of this earth God breathed his breath in us and he caused us to be living souls his breath which is the spirit keeps us alive so the soul that was created by God is alive the breath of God Cause the spiritual being, this soul, to become alive. For time's sake, I'm gonna stop right here. But stay tuned, cause coming up, it's gonna get interesting. Keep coming, it's gonna get interesting. <laughs> All right, brothers and sisters, God bless you.